welcome back team. We are carrying on with binomial expansion. Today we're moving on to more complex expansions. This can get a bit tricky, uh, but it is very logical. So you really need to be sure of what we've done in the previous e uh, exercises to uh, work well in this exercise. I'm going to try three with you now to give you a sort of feel for how you go about doing these. The first question is 1a, we've got uh, bracket 2 plus x, close bracket, and then bracket 1 plus x to the power of 8. And we have to find the first three terms ascending and ascending powers of x. The way you approach these is you think about this part here first. I'm going to expand that to the first three uh, terms. So when I expand this, what do I get? Well, I'm going to get 8, choose 0. 1 to the power of 8 times x to the power of 0. That's our first term. That's how that works. Uh, you'll remember from the previous exercise. My second term will be 8, choose 1, times 1 to the power of, and we drop that power down, and the x power raises to x to the power of 1. And our third term will be 8, choose 2, 1 to the power of, drops down again, and our x power moves up to squared. So we've got uh, x to the 0, x to the 1, x to the 2. Those are the first three terms in ascending powers of x of the highlighted uh, bracket that I've done here. 8 choose 0 is 1, so my first term is going to be 1. My second term is going to be 8 choose 1, which is 8 times 1 times x, so it will simply be 8x. My final term uh, 8 choose 2, which is 28, uh, 28 x squared. So, and then of course it will be plus dot dot dot, all the way up to x to the power of 8. But we can ignore the rest of this when we're just doing the first three terms. So now I'm going to go 2 plus x, and then I'm going to see what my first three terms are when I expand it would be. Now, the first term is obviously going to be a term without x's. So there's only one way of doing that. There's this way here, 2 times 1. So my first term is 2. Let's think about our second term. It's got to be uh, x's. So how do we make uh, x terms? Well, we could do 2 times 8x, which is 16x, or we could do x times 1. So we should have 17x. Let's move on to our third term. This is going to be a term in x squared. How do we make x squared? Well, we could times 2 by 28x squared, or we could times x by 8x. So 2 times 28x squared is 56x squared, and then I'm going to add to that the 8x squared, which will give me 64 x squared. So that's the kind of thinking that you need to solve these. Well, let's move on to the second question I have here, which is number four. We're finding the term independent of x. So this is uh, like our x to the zero term. We, we don't want any x's in there. And we've got this expansion here. Now, when we're doing these, it's a good idea to just try and think about what these terms uh, in our expanded bracket are going to look like before we go about working out exactly what they are. So that first bracket is just simply that. But the second bracket, you know you're going to have, uh, and I'm just going to represent uh, this as a coefficient of x to the 0, and then you're going to have another coefficient, and this time it will be a, a x to the minus 1 term. Now, the reason I say minus 1 is because you notice that our second term, we have uh, 3 over x. So when we put that to the power of 1, it's going to be a minus a x to the minus 1. And in the next one will be an x to the minus 2. And that's as far as I really need to go, because if you look at this expansion here, the way to make an, uh, a term independent of x is to times the 3 by this one here, which will give you a x to the 0 term. And the other way is to times an x over 2 by this term here, because the x's will cancel out. That's what we're trying to achieve here, and if we add those two together, we will get a term independent of x. So in that case, 
my first uh, job is to work out this and this. So let's do that. 2 plus 3 over x, when we expand it, what's that going to be? Well, 6 choose 0, 2 to the power of 6, 3 over x to the power of 0. And 6 choose 1, 2 to the power of 5, 3 over x to the power of 1. Now, uh, 6 choose 0 is 1, so my first term is uh, 2 to the power of 6, which is 64, uh, so it'll be simply 64. Oops, come back. 64. My second term, 6 choose 1, which is 6, it'll be 6 times 2 to the power of 5 times 3. So this one should be uh, 5, 7, 6 all over x. And now we're ready to go. 2 plus 3 over x into 64 plus 5, 7, 6 over x plus, and you know that this expansion would go on, but we actually don't need any more of it to do what we're trying to achieve here. So, to make my x to the power of 0 term, 2 times 64, which is 128, plus, uh, hmm, oops, I've made a wee mistake here. I have made a wee mistake here. To make uh, my x to the 0 term or my term independent of x, I'm going to multiply 3 by 64, and then I'm going to multiply x over 2 by 5, 7, 6 over x. So, uh, what do we get? Well, 3 times 64 gives us 192, so I have 192 here, and then uh, 576 divided by 2 is 288, and that gives me uh, 480. And that's our second question sorted. So guys, we're on the last uh, question I'm going to do with you from this exercise, and it is a bit tricky. Uh, we've got to find a coefficient of x cubed in this expansion. Now, the first bracket, we've got three terms. We've got 1 plus x minus 2x squared. The second bracket, you'll note that we have uh, an x in the first term, and we've got an x in the second term. Let's not stress about this. We've got this. What I like to do when I'm trying to solve these is just think roughly about what my more complicated expansion is, that's the second one, what's that going to look like when I start expanding it in terms of x. So I know that I'm going to have some kind of coefficient for my first term, and that I'll have x to the power of 7, given that we've got this 7 here. Then uh, I'm going to have uh, my next term, uh, I might have a plus or a minus, um, a coefficient. Now I'll have x to the power of 5, but this second term here is going to be to the power of 1. Uh, sorry, x to the power of 6 is my first part, and then my second one is uh, 2 over x to the power of 1. Uh, so all up, I'm going to have a 2 uh, x to the power of 5. I hope you can see that, because this x at the bottom of the... Uh, in the denominator of the fraction is going to cancel out one of these x to the 6's. Then my next term, I'm going to have x to the power of 5, and then I'm going to be multiplying that by 2 over x, and that's going to be squared. Now, I should say it's going to be minus 2 over x. I want to keep this sign in here, and I should have had that there as well, a minus. Okay, now, x to the power of 5 times... Uh, minus 2 over x squared is going to give us an x to the power of 3 term. x to the power of 3 term. And then our next term would be a coefficient. We'll have x to the 4 into minus 2 over x, and that's going to be to the power of 3 this time. And you can see that this will give us an x 
to the power of one term. And you can see the pattern here. We've gone from x to the 7 to x to the 5. So we're dropping down two each time, dropping down two powers. Now the reason I do this is it just gives me a, a quick idea of what I need for my expansion. I need an x to the 3, and the ways I can get that, I can do this times this term. I could do an x term time, uh, this x term times uh, an x squared, but there are no x squared, so I can just simply ignore that. And uh, I can use this term here times by an x term, which we've got all the way over here. There are no other ways of uh, getting an x cubed term. Even if we went on, like if you imagine this next term, it would be x to the 3, uh, minus 2 over x, all to the power of 4, we're going to end up with a x to the minus 1 term. You can see that we have exhausted all possible ways of getting an x cubed term at this point. So let's uh, do the expansion then. We need a 1 times. Now, let's look at this here. What are we going to have? We're going to have 7 choose 2 times x to the power of 5 times, now minus 2 over x, and this will be to the power of 2. That's our uh, first way of getting an x cubed term. The second way is minus 2x squared, and then we're going to times that by this here, which is going to be 7 choose 3 uh, times x to the power of 4 times minus 2 over x, this time to the power of 3. Let's work out what these are. Well, 7 choose 2 is 21, and then I'm going to times that by minus 2 squared, which is 4. So I'm going to get uh, 84x cubed is this first term. Uh, okay, now let's look at this next one. Let's do the brackets here. So we've got a 7 choose 3, so 7 choose 3, which I get to be 35. Then I'm going to times it by minus 2 cubed. Minus 2 times minus 2, so that's negative 8. Okay, that gives me minus 280 in these brackets here. But then I've got to times it by minus 2, so I'm going to get a positive value of 560. So this will be 560x cubed. When we add those two together, um, I'm getting 644x cubed. And so my coefficient is therefore 644. And that should be my answer to this question. Now, I know this is not easy. You're going to need a lot of practice at this. So don't feel uh, ashamed or embarrassed if you need to ask me some questions about particular examples. I'm totally happy to help you. But I, I want you to think about the process here. Do what I've done in, at the beginning of this question here, where I sort of uh, did a mock expansion of my second term to give me an idea of, what I would have as, as, as my, my terms in that expansion. Uh, that is a helpful way of going about these, because you don't really want to have to do a whole expansion um, of, of all the terms of those brackets. If you can do something in a more speedy manner like I did, and igno I ignored everything after x to the minus 1, I didn't need to worry about any of the other terms. Um, that will save you a lot of time in exams. Um, if you're not understanding this, feel free to ask. Alright, take care. Thank you.